Hello everyone and welcome to this video that was voted for by patrons and YouTube members. So thank you again so much for the patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. In this video, they have voted for how to do a damage type class. In other words, how to use the damage type class uh, option on the apply damage to send over information about the effect that you are trying to apply to the target. So in this episode, we're going to go through how to set up the damage type class and how you can use it to signify a character to be burning alive from a fire spell. So let's jump in and get started. So begin, I've got a character here who can shoot fireballs like so. And the aim is to use the damage type class to not only detect I'm shooting fire, but also set the character I'm hitting alight with flames. So to begin, we need to create a damage type class. So we're going to go into add new blueprint class and search the all boxes at the bottom uh, for damage type. And select this and you'll name it damage type underscore fire. And if you open it up now, the damage type class is a very different type of class than you're probably used to, as it doesn't have an event graph and you can only do certain things on it. It's quite limiting in fact of what you can actually do. What its intention is, is to be basically fired off and accessed and then forgotten about. So it's meant for just a one time use really. It's not something that you grab hold of and keep track of. It, you want to ideally use it and move on. So as you can see, it does come with some basic stuff already from the damage type class. Um, this is fine, but it's nothing really useful for our, our needs here. And over here, you can see there's no functions, no variables, nothing like that to change. So let's first of all go through and show you how to assign a damage type class to an attack damage. So I'm going to go into my fireball effect, which I have over here. And this is from using Lyle's eight elements pack, which is free for the month of August 2021. And I'm going to go and edit the base projectile alt class. And the base projectile alt class has this hit event. When it hits, it does the emitter and does all this stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just disconnect the endpoint here and move this all out of the way. And instead, I'm going to put in the apply damage. And the damage actor is going to come from my hit here. So go other. The damage causer is going to be the instigator of this fireball. So whoever fired the fireball be me and the base damage is how much damage it's going to do so let's say it does 10 damage now you have the damage type class and this is where you insert your class here so i'm going to do drop down and i'll see my damage type fire hit compile and save that so that's how you send the class across how do we actually use it well if we go back to our target dummy and add a event any damage class to this event sorry not class and the event any damage is what's called when it receives apply damage so if i do a little print string here i can print out the damage it's being dealt and to demonstrate that there you go okay so what i want to do is make it so this damage fire goes through the other side so you notice here damage type comes through as a reference this basically means that it creates the damage type class out in the memory in the game. So this actually spawns it into the world essentially. Meaning that we can use this and call functions on it to do certain things. So let's go through an example here. I'm going to go to my damage type class here. And open the full blueprint editor. I'm going to create a function here. And this one we're going to call set on fire. Now set on fire is an interesting thing to do because there's one thing you can't do in here. You can't spawn actors. So you can't really do anything like that. And I want to spawn a burning effect to my character. So how do we actually approach this? Well, we have to handle that on the player side. So let's handle that on the player side now. So for this, I'm going to create a component. I'm going to create a new blueprint class and choose actor component. And we call this one status effect component. For example, you can incorporate this same thing into other components that you may have. That it feels like it suits it, like a damage component if you're using that. And in there, we're going to have various functions that can do what we want it to do. 
So we have a function here called trigger effect. And in trigger effect, we need to send over what effect we want to trigger. So here I'm going to add an input and we're going to have a input of the effect here. And it might be a good idea to have it as an enum. So you have different effects on your enum class. So we go to animation, uh, to a, uh, blueprints, enumeration, and do e status effect. And inside there, we're going to add our burning enumerator. We're going to add another one as well for stunned. And we'll have another one for blinded. Okay, and hit save. We'll close that. And we're going to make the effect on our trigger effect have the type of that enum, enum class. So E status effects. Hit compile, and there we go. So now on the trigger effect, we take this out and we're going to switch on E status effects. And now you see the different things come out. On burning, I want to bur spawn a burning effect on the character. So let's do that. Let's make a burning effect. Within class, actor. I'm going to create an effect class overall, which is going to be the parent class. And we'll call it just effect. And I'm going to right click on that and create child. And this will be effect burning. And on the burning effect, we're going to have the particle effect. Or the fire. We're going to go on here and add fire to it. And there's our fire. Hit compile and save that. We're then going to go to its event graph and we're going to put a timer on its begin play. On begin play, we're going to do set timer by event. And we're going to do a time of, let's say, uh, two and looping. And the event that comes down here, the custom event, and we'll call this one burn target. And on burn target, we're going to do out here and we're going to apply damage and the damaged actor is going to be the attached actor so get attached uh, get attached parent actor so what happens is when we spawn it we're going to actually attach it to the target and that way we can tell it to damage whoever it's attached to and the base damage we'll do here will be let's say three and the damage causer and an instigator uh, is going to be based upon whoever casted the uh, the entire thing itself. So when we get this effect burning, we're going to get the instigator of it and send that over to the damage causer. And there we go. Hit compile and save that. And we are going to set a lifespan on this one. So we're going to go over to class defaults and set a lifespan. So don't burn forever. We'll set it to 15 seconds. And we're going to close that and go back to our status effect component. On the burning here, we're going to do spawn actor from class and choose our burning effect. Effect burning. And the spawn transform is going to be based upon this actor's transform. So get actor transform. Sorry, uh, get owner. And then you have to get the transform. Because this is a component it doesn't have a transform but it only does so that will go into there and spawn the burning actor on there and we want to attach it to the owner uh, of the uh, status effect so we're going to do attach actor to actor and the parent actor is going to be get owner and spread that out a bit and we're going to set the location, rotation, and scale rule just to be snap to target. Compile and save. And um, oh, sorry, got the wrong get owner. It's get owner. This one. There you go. Okay, so that will go there and spawn this burning thing. We're not going to worry about the other two uh, during this video, uh, but for now, this will do us just fine. 
So with that now added, we're going to work on getting it to actually call that burning effect using a damage type. Now the problem is we just can't cast this to our damage type. We can't do cast type that fire. The reason why is because we may have multiple damage types. We can't cast all of them. So how do we actually approach this? Well, this is where using an interface comes in handy. So we're going to go down here and we're going to create a damage type interface. And in here, we're going to set up a function in here called trigger effect. And on the trigger effect, we're going to have one input on here, and that is going to be the status effect component. And the type is going to be obviously the status effect component itself. Hit compile and save that. Now, if we go back to our damage type fire, we go to the class settings and implement that interface. We now should see trigger effect on here on the right uh, left hand side. So I'm going to right click on this and implement event. And here it comes. So the status effect comp, I'm going to drag this out and call the trigger effect on there as well. And now I have the option to choose what effect I want to trigger. So in this case, because it's fire, I want to leave it as burning. Hit compile and save that. Now, because it's an interface, we can send an interface call to it from our target dummy. So target dummy, we drag out from the damage type and we do trigger effect message. And then plug in the status effect component here of the target. Compile and save. And to test that the damage is being dealt, I'm going to do a print string as well. And the print string is going to take the damage value out like this. So now let's test this out. So here we are. We're going to check out our fire ball spell. And there you go. He'll set on fire because it's now sending that damage type fire across to him. That is then triggering the event on the damage type fire class which is then triggering the status effect component to spawn the effect on him. And there you go, it disappears after time. And while that effect's on him, it is de dealing damage to him, as we saw the three in the corner. And that's an example of what you can achieve with damage type classes. They're very robust and very powerful to use, but they're just another tool in your arsenal to create the combat that you want to create. So here I'm going to show you an example of me applying this same logic by extending it a little bit further into a more fuller game. So here I've gone further and added extra effects to the characters and added obviously a lot more graphics and in you can see here I set up the burning and hit they will burn and deal damage over time seeing the damage numbers could pop off of them. But we can also stun them as well so I can use my electric bolt here and he is now stunned and locked into position he won't move until it wears off okay so there's also a chance for it to crit as well when I hit him with one of these balls and they see their critical hit happen there so the critical hit is being handled by the damage type class as well so I can go in here and I can actually show you that if I go into my damage type fire you can see the effect has a little bit extra on here where I'm using the adjusted damage uh, coming through and coming out here so I'm taking a damage value into the trigger effect and here I'm just multiplying it by 1.5 and putting a select float to do a random chance in range. And the critical hit chance here is what I set it to when I want to trigger a critical hit. So far I set it to 100% so it'll always be critical. So that will come out of here and then if I go back to the character itself you can see how I'm using the adjusted damage instead if it is in fact being a critical hit. So you can expand upon it quite much a lot further uh, using this uh, and it's all using the damage type class and interface and you can see a status effect component here being used all the same on our trigger effect okay so we've got the stun and we've got the status effect here too and that brings us to the end of this video Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. Once again, I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons and YouTube members for making their votes count for this video.
Remember, if you want to see more of my content before everyone else, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where a donation of just $1 gets you access to all my content before anyone else. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.